about to be a star of the show. Yep. Mm. Pete don't smell good in here. Pee pet, pee pet, pee pet. Yeah. Excellent. So we got some more there. We got some up there. And it made a pretty big difference. Um, the hell with the auto belts. It's pretty raunchy. All right, welcome back to the channel. My name's Justin. Today, we're back on the Festiva. It is gonna be a multi-part series that you're seeing here. You're gonna see part two. Last time in part one, you saw us clean the floor out, lay the sound editor down. This time on part two, you're gonna see us steam clean the headliner, the door panels, and kind of do a little restoration, little spray can, what's it called? Craigslist rebuild, pretty much. The uh, inside door panels. And here towards the end of the video, I run into a little trouble. So we're probably gonna end up splitting this video three ways. I thought about just doing it two ways, but then I put everything together and it was, this, this last one would have been over an hour and a half long, so. Everybody loves a three-way. All right, I, I don't know if I can keep that. I don't know if I can keep that or not. <laughs> so what you're about to see is part two of the probably three-part Festiva interior resurrection series here. So hope you enjoy. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments. And hey, if you like what you see, drop a like, subscribe. I sure would appreciate it, but let's get into it. Okay, let's calm down, Betty. Oh my, oh my gosh. Okay, so the headliner is pretty rough. Uh, it. oh, okay. Pretty rough looking. Jesse has a steam cleaner. So we're gonna steam clean the headliner and the door panels. Well, Cheyenne's gonna steam clean the door panels and the headliner. Yeah. Yeah, good. Say again now. Pay around. It, see, it's paid, yeah, it's, it's and we're just wiping it. Yep. No glue. It does making a pretty good difference, though. That's that's yeah. doing pretty good. Appreciate you having pee hands for me, buddy. But see, like we're just raw dogging the headliner. Raw dogging the pee headliner. This looks nasty. Right. This looks semi bad. Right. Not to, oh, oh gosh. Okay, okay. Well, good job. You're doing great jobs. So I've been running around. I've been very busy the last couple of days. I've only been able to do this, work on this little thing for a couple of hours, and most of the time it's really late. And um, you know, my sinuses have been messing me up pretty good. The weather change, it went from like 60 degrees to 30 degrees. Really mess with the sinuses. I don't do well with that. But um, this is where we're at with the car right now. The last time I threw it, I went ahead, Threw the carpet in it, everything is sound deadened under there and sealed up, you know, like I said, patch panels welded in. Sound deadener all through there. We got the roof lined with sound deadener. We got the doors lined with sound deadener. We steam cleaned the headliner. It looks a lot better. I'll get that slapped in today. Uh, I wanted to let that drip dry overnight before I threw it in. Then got the door panel steam cleaned. I think I'm actually going to do some custom door panels in the future because they're like really, really simple. And my kind of idea for the car, if you've ever seen one of those like coffee cups from the 90s with like the aqua blue and the purple, like the little like uh, Microsoft art or Microsoft paint style stripes and with swigglies on it. I want to do this car that way. I want like a livery, livery, whatever down the side of it. I want to do the same thing with the panels on the inside and hopefully we'll get her set a little lower to the ground, get some wheels that I have right over here stuck on it. I'm thinking about painting them fellers white. These are some some 14 inch, you know, real 90s, real classy 90s style 
wheels. I'm wore out, I ain't gonna lie. I'm pretty wore out. But today, I think I'm going to slap, finish getting the carpet suck in, get the front of the car put together enough where I can slap a seat in it, door panels, headliner. We may be good enough to drive this thing. We'll see. You know, we'll see. We gotta get all the legalities taken care of first. But I think the car itself is really close to being a going to town rig, you know? So I'm gonna work towards that today. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We got Cheyenne back on the steam cleaner. Getting the visors. I'm gonna go ahead, throw the door panels in. I got the headliner snipped in. Look at that. Bam, headliner. Looks way better. Got it snipped in, throw the visors in, the rear view mirror. I'm gonna do the um, Ford Escort dome lot upgrade. And then I gotta go ahead and get the console finished, belt it in. Then we'll be good to start putting some plastics in, but I think I'm gonna try to do a little restoration on the plastics there. Gotta run to the Home Depot, pick up some paint primer stuff, try it out. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. So I've been pulling parts out of the parts festiva back there. And I've gotten to the plastic panels that go around the rear strut tower. That covers pretty much all of that there. And this is the set that come out of the 89 LX over there. And this is the set original to the car. I think we're going to try to restore these like the really quick and easy way with some little, ch -ch -ch -ch, you know what I'm saying? And mm, I think we're going to go with this set. That set looks a lot worse to start with. So I think we're gonna start with this set and then we're also gonna add some map pockets. I bought these from a junkyard a couple of years ago. They are attached to the door panel by four screws. Every door panel has the little cutout for them down there. I go up there. So we're gonna attach that, but they look pretty rough. We tried cleaning them, the paint won't come off, so we're gonna just spray those as well. And then after they get sprayed, should be good to start slapping it back in there. It's coming together pretty good. So after a quick trip to town, we picked up some paint, Rust-Oleum Ultra Cover Granite Satin to respray all these plastic pieces because uh, that's, that's what come out of the car. They look pretty rough. And that's how it looks after two coats. And we're going to try to respray each of the plastic panels here. We're going to use this set rather than this set because that's all in a little rougher shape there. So we're going to grab this set of stuff and we're going to sand it down a little and knock some of the high spots off. Or Cheyenne's going to sand it down a little. See, there's, well, she got it pretty good there. It, um, you can kind of see over here, see there's a lot of little gritty stuff that'll wipe off. So what we'll do is take some sandpaper, knock it down flat, smooth it out some, wipe it down with acetone, and then spray this, uh, it's paint and primer. And I gotta say, it turns out pretty good. I mean, that looks significantly better than that does. So while she's prepping these pieces for paint, I gotta grab some more panels out of this Festiva, like the A and the B pillar panels here, since I'm converting everything into manual belts. And we ought to be in good shape. Yeah. So Cheyenne's sanding. When she sands it down, pretty good. I'm gonna take some acetone on a rag, wipe it down, and then get kind of close to the heater because it's like 35 degrees outside. It's pretty chilly. So we're gonna get close to the heater, spray it, let it sit, maybe maybe two coats or three coats. I got three cans worth of this stuff, so we'll see how much it does. So it's kind of hard to get the Grand Canyon craters out of this feller here. So I found some truck bed liner. I don't even know if this is paintable, really. Maybe not. Maybe. I don't know. It's probably not. But we're going to apply some bed liner here to give us a little more of an even texture. And then we'll cover it with our satin 
granite, granite, satin, satin, granite, whatever. But we'll apply the bed liner first, let it chill and get a little wrinkly texture to it. I think they make paintable bed liner or even just wrinkle paint, but not concerned because I don't have any and this is all we have. So I'm not really worried about the texture on these little bottom pieces here. So I'm just gonna hit them with the, with the color. And I gotta say this color matches pretty good. We, oh, of course. We sanded it up pretty good. Wiped her down with some acetone. And I think this is for plastic. Bam. Indoor, outdoor, all of it. Look at that. Easy as that. Get it at your Home Depot. And once that dries, it'll be a satin finish. It'll look good. Way better than this, even if it's not perfect. I'll give these a couple of coats since they're such a high traffic area, but that looks way better, way better. Now I'll let the bed liner kind of set up over here, over there. Put another coat on that. We got the little mat pockets in the doors over here. And that's how close the color resembles. And that's not even like super clean. That's pretty good. It's getting pretty late. So we're probably just gonna have to pick back up tomorrow when everything's dry. And we can go back in with the interior. So the next thing you'll probably see is all these panels painted and ready to go in the car. See you tomorrow. All right, what's going on? We're back on the Festiva, day four, maybe, something like that. I'm losing track of the days, a lot of hours, I'm tired and whatever. Anyway, little recap. We got all the sound deadener stuck in it. There's sound deadener in the roof now, quiet. There's sound deadener in the doors. Carpet stuck in it, console stuck in it. I got all my little plastic panel pieces here painted up. We kind of sanded them down a little. Hit them with some bed liner to give it a little texture because it's like chalky plastic stuff. It was really kind of hard to knock all that down without spending a ton of time on it. So we knocked it down a little bit, sprayed some bed liner on it, and then we hit it with this Rust-Oleum Scranton or Satin Granite from Home Depot. Yep. We hit it with that. It matched really good actually to the factory interior color. We added these matte pockets. They were really bad before. I could put a picture somewhere over here. They were really bad before. They look a lot better now. None of this was perfect, but it looks significantly better than it did when we started. I got Cheyenne over here slaving away. She's cleaning up on the, on the seats, making the seats look good. She's doing a good job. Look at that. That's a lot of bad it looks stuff. Better. It looks better already. Absolutely. A lot, of, a lot of bad stuff coming out of it. It'll probably get a seat cover anyway, but it's nice to have it looking good under that seat cover, you know, and not looking like I got in it all greasy every day like I, like I do. So I'm gonna start putting this interior back together. We got a special guest over here in the shop. We got old Jer Bear. That's a professional detail man if I've ever seen one. He's buffing on his old 93 Fox body. A couple of 93 Fords sitting in here. This is peak Ford for 93. And then there's number two over there, the Fox body. I got one door panel back in. Looking pretty fresh. Map pocket, love it. Love the map pocket. Now I gotta throw that door panel back in and we'll be done with the doors. So while Jerry's been struggling, over there buffing on his little Mustang. I gotta say, he's actually done a pretty good job. No, I haven't. This uh, well, he's, you know, this has only taken him like 18 hours so far. But the car looks a lot better. Proud of Jerry. Huh? Huh? What? I said I'm proud of you, buddy. Thank you. We have got door panelage. We've got rocker guardage, both sides, right? Next thing I'm doing, slap it in seat belts, and then I can get the big pieces and then I can work towards seats. 
This little rig is coming right around, right around. They're making a lot of noise over there, but we've got uh, we've got these plastic pieces stuck in. We got the seat belts in. Everything's going good, or was going good, until I found out that there is no speaker wire running back here. Uh, and they put a radio in and they only wired up the two front speakers. And I just got all this in here. So now I gotta pull at least one side back out. And I, I just cannot have a car without a radio. Literally the first thing that I'll do to any car is throw a radio in it. So I guess I'm gonna stop what I'm doing on the inside until I can get speaker wire run all the way to the back. So digging into this radio, I have uncovered some issues here. So this, uh, first of all, I don't like this little rinky dink radio. I prefer one that's got like a little meat to it, you know? This is a little cheap guy I figure he threw in right beforehand. Um, one thing I noticed is the speaker wire, so only has one of them run to both these front two speakers. He has no constant power, only has ignition power. I gotta fix the radio harness. <sighs> Whoever wired the radio in. I needed to read the instructions a little better. So I gotta rewire that, then run new speaker wire, then I can put all the plastic in and the seats in, and then we'll be in good shape, maybe. We'll see. So I have absolutely fallen down a massive rabbit hole of wiring, and I found blown fuses, and I ended up finding the speaker wires back here. They were tucked down in the depths of hell. Um, this one was integrated with the uh, tail light harness. Pretty sure when I turned the lights on, this started playing the weekend. But I now have a diagram. A little wiring diagram up here. Whoever put the radio in last bought one of those adapter harnesses, whatever. So I have these plugs. Now I just need to make this match up here. And then the radio situation can be done with for now until we decide to put probably probably two 12s back there. Not really sure, but a little car's going to be hitting. Probably two 12s, maybe 10s, but probably 12s. But anyway, it's been a painstaking pro process here of, you know, figuring out what, what that fella was thinking in the process, a little ADD got a hold to me and I decided I'm going to swap these heater controls out for the orange ones because I'm going to swap the orange tack into it in the future. So uh, I was like, well, you know, I already have the bezel off. Might as well do that. And then I got stuck and then I'm on this again. And and uh, I've just been jumping all around. You know, I was supposed to have the plastic in and the seats in by now, but who knows? That may be like next Thursday at this point. We'll see. All right. So as you can see, I run into some trouble with some wiring issues in this Festiva here and my ADD kicked in. I, I get to looking at something I want to do and I like forget what I'm doing. And I, I went from wiring to heater controls to plastic and then back to wire. And so it kind of jumps around a lot, but what you just saw was the end of part two of this probably three part series of the little Festiva interior resurrection stuff. And hopefully next week when the last part comes out, that could be most of the work that I'm going to be doing to that car for now. And I can get it on the road and get some road test miles put down on it. And then in the future, we can continue our progress on making the car what I, you know, the little vision I have in my mind. But thank you very much for watching. I appreciate all the support. If you like what you see, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe. I surely would appreciate it. I appreciate all of you watching. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.